In this video, I'm going to show you how to get 3DO emulation up and running on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. The 3DO is a very interesting system to me and one that I have thoroughly enjoyed going back and learning more about over the last few years. And today we're going to talk about how to emulate it on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. So let's dive in. To get started with 3DO emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch, you need to install the Xbox Series X or S version of RetroArch. So refer back to one of my guides on how to do so. You can do it in dev mode, retail mode, doesn't matter. And then some of you might also be interested in running a lot of your install from USB, so there's a guide here for that as well. But refer back to one of these two guides for installing if you haven't already, and then follow back along with this tutorial. Next, we're going to need two things to get 3DO emulation up and running on our install of RetroArch. The first being a 3DO BIOS file. Now, as always, you will need to source these BIOS files yourself, as no illegal download links are going to be provided on this channel. And there are a number of 3DO BIOS files you can use. You only need to use one BIOS file from any 3DO console to get this emulator up and running. But once you source one, just make sure that the file name matches the specific console of BIOS that it's from. And then just as a quick note, if you plan on playing Japanese games, you are going to need the font file for those as well. I only have North American games, so this wasn't necessary for me, but I wanted to make note of it for those of you that might need it. And next up is 3DO games. Now I dumped my 3DO games and converted them over to ISO format, but if you happen to have a physical collection of 3DO titles, you can dump those with the PC version of RetroArch very easily and have proper BenQ format dumps, and from there you can convert them to CHUD, or ISO, I guess, if you want to. Probably recommend CHUD, honestly. But link to that will be in the description, or of course, as always, you can resort to the shady parts of the net and go from there. Again, no illegal download links are going to be provided on this channel. But once you have a BIOS file and game sourced, we're ready to begin setting up RetroArch. So first thing we're going to do is copy our BIOS file over into our RetroArch system folder. So if you have moved your system folder over to USB, just plug your USB drive into your computing device of choice. Drag your 3DO BIOS into the made system folder. I already had one there, so I'm just going to tell it to replace it. Or if you have your system folder still on the Q drive, access Durango FTP. Start the file share. And then using your preferred FTP method, access your Xbox's file share. Local folder. Find your RetroArch folder. Local state. System. And drag the BIOS file right inside. Again, I already had it, so I'm just going to tell it to replace it. And with that BIOS file placed, we just need to store our 3DO games. So I store my games on USB, so I'm just going to access my USB drive again, open up my made games folder, and drag my 3DO games right in. Or if you're on dev mode and have your games stored on the S drive, access your Xbox's file share, go to the S drive, program files, Windows apps, find your RetroArch folder with the X64 at the end, games folder, and drag your 3DO games right in. But once you have the BIOS file and games placed, we're ready to move over to RetroArch. So I got my USB drive hooked back up to my Xbox and got booted into RetroArch. So from here, we're free to begin loading up 3DO content. And what I really recommend doing is just creating a games playlist. So head down to import content. Now head over to manual scan. And from here, we're going to choose a content directory. So navigate to where your games are stored. If you're on USB in dev mode, it'll be under E. USB under retail mode, it'll be under D. Or if you have them on the internal SSD, follow that S drive path. But anyway, my example, E, games, 3DO games. And then once you get to the directory, tell it to scan this directory. System name. Press up on your D-pad to head to the 3DO company, dash 3DO. Default core, same thing. Press up on the D-pad to go to the 3DO company and choose 3DO Opera. Now make sure scan recursively is set to on if you have your game separated into subfolders. And then once that's set, you can start the scan. And now you'll have a new 3DO playlist here on the left with all of your games inside. And then to play a game, all you need to do is select it and tell it to run. And there we go, 3DO games up and running on the Xbox Series X and S. Just so, so fun. Now there are a couple things I want to cover here when it comes to 3DO emulation, especially in regards to its controller. The 3DO was very interesting. It had three face buttons, two shoulder buttons, and then a start and play button. And the play button actually comes into 
comes into use during play. Like you can see here that P is your play button. So it was a very interesting controller. But if we go into our RetroArt quick menu, navigate down to controls, port one controls, we can see what each of these buttons has been mapped to. So that way you can remap them according to what works better for you. So by default, X is a 3DO's A button. The A button is the 3DO's B button. And then the B button is the 3DO's C button. And then R and L are mapped to your bumpers. And then our P button is mapped to both our start button and our Y button. And then our stop button is assigned to the back button. So just, if you want to change any of this, you can come in here, press A, and select what you want them changed to. Just wanted to make a note of it for those of you that might not care for the default button maps. But once you have everything set up and running the way you like with the controls, you are ready to enjoy some 3DO gaming on your Xbox Series X and S, and I am just getting absolutely trashed right now. Awesome, thank you, T-Hawk. Love looking like a fool. It's good. It's good stuff. There we go. Anyway. But that is it as far as the basic setup of 3DO for Xbox Series X and S is concerned. Let's go ahead and take a minute to talk about some of the advanced core options available to us within the Opera Core. So going back into our RetroArt Quick Menu, we can go down to Options. And our first option is to choose our BIOS file. If you have multiple 3DO BIOS files, you can select the one you want to use here. The next option is to choose our font ROM that I made note of earlier. I don't have one, so this option is turned to off. Next is a CPU overclock mode. So by default, this is set to just the default 3DO CPU speed of 12.5 megahertz. You can increase this all the way up to 25 megahertz, a 2x multiplier, to increase the speed in games, especially games that suffered from hardware-induced lag like Need for Speed. Do note that enabling the overclock will make it so a lot of games will not boot, so I recommend leaving it at default, boot the game, and then increase it as needed. This will also break other games, so do be aware of it. It's fun to mess around with and experiment with it, but it is a very game-by-game -game based core option. Next up, we have console mode, and this is set to NTSC by default, but you can also choose between PAL and PAL2. Next up, we have VDLP pixel format, so you can choose between XRGB88888, 0RGB1555, or RGB565. I leave it on default for myself. That works. Play around with them. See if you like the other looks better. We're going to skip the VDLP bypass and move on to high-res cell rendering. Now, high-res cell rendering basically acts as an internal resolution upscale to up the resolution of your 3DO games by 2x. I believe it's 2x. So, with the option off, this is what Need for Speed looks like. And this is what Need for Speed looks like with the option enabled. As you can see, things are a lot crisper and just overall a lot prettier to look at. So, personal choice if you want to enable this one or not, the Xbox Series X and S can handle this option really well. I don't believe there's any games that really suffer from the upscaling process, but I don't have the most 3DO titles to test, so I can't say for certain about that. So, definitely test it out, see what you think. Next up, Madam Matrix Engine. We're going to leave this on hardware. Opera OS SWI HLE, we're going to leave that off. And we're going to move on to NVRAM Storage, and this is set to per game by default, and I recommend leaving it there. The 3DO had built-in save memory, but it was very limited. So if you have a lot of 3DO games that you're going to be playing between, you want to leave this on per game instead of shared, otherwise you are going to run out of storage space. Next up, active input devices. This is set to 1 by default, and there is a reason for that. If you increase the player count on your 3DO emulation, some games will break. So unless you're playing a multiplayer specific game, don't change this off of 1. If you are going to be playing a multiplayer game, you can change this up to however many players you're going to be playing with. Next up, we have a number of timing hacks that help fix the games that they list. So Crash and Burn, Dino Park, Microcosm, Alone in the Dark, Samurai Showdown. If you're going to be playing any of those games, turn on their specific hacks. And last up, debug output. We don't need to worry about that. But that's going to do it as far as core options are concerned. If there's a game that you need to have certain settings set for, but not others, you can save them as a game override at the top here under Manage Core Options. But that's going to do it as far as 3DO emulation on the Xbox Series X and S is concerned. Performance is a lot better than the old 4DO core on Xbox, and the system itself is just a joy to really play. 
As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor, please be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new tutorials go live. Goes a long way to helping us keep the place up and running, and just a big thank you to each and every one of you again for watching these videos. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place going and bringing more update vids for Xbox RetroArch your way. Big shout out as always to all of our current champions. Thank you so much everybody for believing in what we do and helping us keep it going. Y'all are our rock stars and we're so grateful for each and every one of you. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome and we'll see you back next video.